Hey guys, thanks for coming back to the channel and this is part of our garden build, how to build a deer proof fence. And uh, we've got the, the fencing up and we're real happy with it. I still need to do a wire on the top and build a gate. So let's get to it. Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off-grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. Okay guys, so we have a six and a half foot deer fencing and right now is all we have is a temporary gate right now that we continue to hook on here, but I'm gonna build a, a wooden gate that we can swing open and get access here. I also need to string a wire on the top of these poles. The shortest of these poles are eight foot tall and the, the fencing is six and a half, so that should be sufficient. And deer can see the wire. A lot of people will hang CDs, or bags of water or whatever, something that's gonna flash and give off some um, some reflection so they can see. Uh, but I don't think we're gonna need to do that. We're just gonna put a wire up and we might put some flags or some pieces of orange tape or something that will flap in the wind so the deer can see that. But so far so good. The deer have been coming around. I'll see if I can get some footage the next time we have a deer. The deer have been pacing around this fence, looking in at the garden and seeing what's in there eating the grass around the fence, but they've been pasting this fence already. And so we already know that this thing is working. So let's build a gate. Okay, so I'm gonna measure this, uh, this opening here. I'm gonna measure from the thickest part of the, of the pole. And I'm gonna subtract some space from it. I'm showing 113 inches. So nine foot five. So these are these were spaced at 10 foot openings at 10 foot centers. Let me show you the hardware. Okay guys, so here's the hinge that I'm gonna be using for this gate. Okay, so I have nine foot five and I need to make sure I leave, if this is where the edge of my gate is gonna be, I need to be able to have room for this thing to work and it's adjustable. You can screw it in or out to adjust the gate to make it level. So I need to give it about Oh, looks like two inches. Two inches will give me about a half inch of adjustment on the top of the bottom. So if I give it two inches, so if I make this gate nine foot three, then that should be just tight enough for these. That should be nice and tight and seal up the opening. It's got the square uh, holes in it for a carriage bolt. So we can, uh, we're gonna bolt this through the, the wood. I am going to make this gate this fencing is six and a half foot tall. I want it to be pretty close to the ground and about the same height as the fencing. So I'm gonna go ahead and go six and a half foot tall. I'm gonna need three 10 foot two by fours and three seven foot two by fours. Okay, let's get it done. You wanna make sure to square your saw before you start cutting. Nice and flat against the backrest and I am square against the blade. I'm good to go. Okay guys, I'm gonna do a pocket screw. I think that's gonna be the most effective way, the strongest possible joint that I can make. And these pocket screws are, I think they're pretty amazing. <clears throat> you're gonna line this thing up with the back, make sure this thing is centered, clamp that sucker down. That wasn't very deep. I'm gonna back this up just a little bit more because I want a little more meat. It only gave me about three quarters of an inch of, of meat. I'm gonna back that up just a little bit. Been a while since I've done one of these guys. I'm gonna go right about here. There, that gave me a little more meat. That's gonna give me a solid inch of wood. I'm gonna be using these three and a half inch construction screws, a number 10 head. Guys, this may be Counter, uh, it's not going to be counterproductive, but a little bit anal. Uh, I'm going to glue this just, just for a little extra. Uh, I don't know how much difference this is really going to make on a gate. Okay, main square is done. Now I got to do a diagonal, make sure it fits, and then we're good to go. Okay, let's see if this fits. How is that even possible? 
Well, I measured it's, nine foot five. Unless nine. it's hitting right here. Unless you knock down those because it's like two inches. Okay guys, even though I measured from the base and I gave myself two and a half inches of space with this because the pole isn't perfectly plumb, but I can still raise this a little bit to make this parallel. The problem is that we've got all the extra knots, so I need to just cut off the width of a two by four, so three and a half inches, that's an easy fix. Three and a half inches divided by two is gonna be one and three quarters for a center line. I'm gonna hold my pencil, run this down with the tape measure. There's my center line. Okay, I want this screw to go in right about here. I mean, look at the way this is set. So you can see that I, the shoulder is set right about there. So if I want to have an inch of meat, I need to set this three quarters from the side. So right about here. Okay guys, so now I've got the diagonal installed. I did a pocket screw on two sides and I'm gonna be putting these brackets, these hinge pieces on the top right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put three all the way through and then at some point, because this gate is a little bit on the long, long side, I'm gonna put a support wire on here just to make sure I have a little, an extra support on here. I did put the diagonal in there and that really makes this frame a lot more rigid and gives it, um, it gives it support so that it will stay square. Reusing stuff like hinges and bolts so I don't have to buy anything. So these were a little bit too long so I just got to trim them off. I feel like this is a little bit too wobbly. It's almost too big. I think I want to put a couple of cross beams in here as well to stiffen that up. So I'm going to add two cross beams to this just to stiffen it up. Oh yeah, adding that other cross beam in there, stiffen this thing up big time. I'm a lot more confident in the size of this gate now with the double cross beam. Got my hinges on, now it's time to put the fencing on. two more inches. All right guys, a little bit of a trial and error here. Because this pole is leaning just a little bit and we have a little bit of a slope right here, this side's gonna have to be higher so it will clear out there. I don't wanna dig all that grass up over there. But we can, sit, we can certainly fill this in with some dirt to uh, keep the rodents out as much as possible. So I had to go up about six inches on, on both these hinges. So I'm gonna take this one out and re-drill it. And then I'm gonna also replumb it so it's a little bit more more level. All right, guys, we're going to put some cable on this thing. I'm going to put a cable from up here down to this corner right here. And just for a little extra support on the on this gate, because it's, it does stick out quite a ways. And I'm anticipating that over time, this might sag a little bit, even though I have the cross brace in here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this cables on. And I got this cable off Amazon. I will leave a link in the description for you. It is eighth inch cable and it has something like a oh, 3,000 pound, uh, um, it's good for like 3,000 pounds. 
So this is really, really awesome stuff. I'll leave a link in the description and you can order a, a bag of these cable clamps with a seven millimeter nut on it uh, in order to clamp this stuff. I'll leave a link in the description for these as well. These things work really, really good. There, so putting one of these things in is pretty easy. You just gotta tap it in and then you can just use this thing to twist it in. And I'm gonna use this. This will swivel like a hinge so that it'll swivel with the gate. Something I got at a garage sale or something, some sort of, something I kept for over the years, knew that I would need it someday. All right guys, I got the one secured up there. And I'm gonna give you guys a little quick little hint. When you're cutting wire rope like this stuff, this is technically called wire rope. I had a subscriber point that out on the last video and he was absolutely right. So one way to keep this stuff from unraveling, put a piece of tape on it first and then cut it. And that'll keep that from fraying at the end. Bigger wire rope, you gotta do other stuff too, like on stuff on cranes, you gotta actually weld it before you cut it or put a tie wire around it. But this is pretty small stuff, so. Then when you go to cut it, it doesn't fray. <clears throat> oh, you like that ring that I saved over there. Did you save that? Yeah. Where did you save that from? From the teardown. Oh, that's where that came from. I was mm -hmm. just commenting to everybody that we saved it from something. I couldn't remember what it was, where it came from. Yeah. You saved that. Uh -huh. Nice, honey. Thank you. Good job. Once again, my lovely assistant. Are you going to put an eyelet at the top? I was just going to go around it. Mm. You want me to put an eyelet on there? I think it would be best. Why? Because it'll be nice and centered. Oh, you're going to do that. Okay. I thought you were just going to tie a knot. No. I have these cable clamps, extras from them. We put up our cell tower. Okay guys, we got the gate hung and I got the support wire up there. That'll help kind of support this gate because it's, it's nine feet wide. And we put a latch on here with a couple of uh, lag bolts. All right, there we go guys. A little bit of trial and error to get the spacing and uh, to get the spacing right and to hang it properly so that we were going to clear the hillside as it opens up. And Olivia put a nice coat of sealer on here to kind of protect the wood against the elements. And this thing is solid. Uh, for a nine foot gate, hopefully that gave you guys an idea of how to make a gate with those pocket screws and uh, to help support it. So I think this is going to be sufficient for keeping out the deer. And it's real convenient to come in and out with our tractor and our side-by-side -side and whatnot. So thanks guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Looking for the next videos on the gopher wars and, um, and more tips and tricks as we build this homestead. So see you guys next video.